So the gift of faith, right? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. And so you wouldn't be here, most of you anyway, wouldn't be here if you didn't have some spark of faith or a hunger and thirst for the faith, you know, cultivating that, uh, that, that faith. And so, uh, and so we hear the words of, of, of Thomas and, um, and I, I say this seems like most years that I have the, the, the feast of the Apostle Thomas is, you know, these words, my Lord and my God, they're a little prayer that traditionally Catholics have said silently as the host is elevated, you know, as uh, in that moment of adoration, we see Christ present to us, but only with the eyes of faith. And so we repeat the words of Thomas, my Lord and my God. By faith, we know Jesus is present in the Blessed Sacrament. By faith, we know Jesus is present in the sacraments, all of them, by faith. So a little bit of Bible trivia for you today. Psalm 117 is the psalm that we had. It's the shortest psalm. So if you want to memorize a psalm, memorize Psalm 117, two verses. So uh, it can be done. I've done it, okay? But it's a, different, it's a different version than what we have here in the uh, lectionary. I want to, I want to borrow from, uh, believe it, uh, St. Gregory the Great. I'm going to steal part of one of his sermons here. And uh, also I met this guy named Thomas who was a twin, okay? He was a twin. And it says... Thomas called Didymus, and the old translation says Thomas, Thomas called the twin, because the word Didymus means twin. He was not happy that they changed it to Didymus. He goes, nobody knows what that means, you know, but uh, so twin. So Thomas, he was, he liked pointing out the fact that, that uh, Thomas was one of the twins, and he was a twin, and his name was Thomas, nonetheless. There you go, Didymus. Thomas, one of the 12, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. He was the only disciple absence, absent. On his return, he heard what had happened but refused to believe it. The Lord came a second time. He offered his side for the disbelieving disciple to touch. He held out his hands, showing the scars of his wounds. He healed the wound of his disbelief. Dearly beloved, what do you see in these events? Do you really believe that was by chance that this chosen disciple was absent, then came and heard, heard and doubted, doubted and touched, touched and believed? It was not by chance, but in God's providence. In a marvelous way, God's mercy arranged that the disbelieving disciple, in touching the wounds of his master's body, should heal our wound of disbelief. The disbelief of Thomas has done more for our faith than the faith of the other disciples. As he touches Christ and is won over to belief, every doubt is cast aside and our faith is strengthened. So the disciple who doubted then felt Christ's wounds and becomes a witness to the reality of the resurrection. Touching Christ, he cried out, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, Thomas, you have believed. Paul said, faith is the guarantee of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. It is clear then that faith is the proof of what cannot be seen. What is seen gives knowledge, not faith. When Thomas saw and touched, why was he told, you have believed because you have seen me? Because what he saw and what he believed were different things. God cannot be seen by mortal man. Thomas saw a human being whom he acknowledged to be God, and he said, my Lord and my God. Seeing, he believed. Looking at one who was true man, he cried out that this was God, the God he could not see. What follows is reason for great joy. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. There is here a particular reference to ourselves. We hold in our hearts one we have not seen in the flesh. We are included in these words, but only if we follow up our faith with good works.